YouTube, hey, it's Casey Demon here at TaxCellAcademy.com. Thanks so much for joining me on today's episode of the TaxCell Podcast. As always, if you enjoy listening to podcasts, please be sure to find us on all the different podcasting platforms. We're like 15 different platforms. So go to your favorite platform, search for Tax Cell Podcast, and then subscribe to us over there. But you're about to watch the video portion of us record for the audio podcast. So without much further ado, let's go ahead and get rolling. Welcome to the Tax Cell Podcast where tax sale investing is made easy. I'm, of course, Casey Dimon. I'm a tax sale veteran, expert, and trainer, author of the Tax Cell Playbook, and founder of the Tax Cell Academy. And I'm your host here on the Tax Cell Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me on today's podcast. And as always, after this podcast, if you're looking to learn more about investing in tax defaulted real estate, head on over to taxcellacademy.com. That's taxcellacademy.com. All right, let's get rolling. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about tax sale auctions. More specifically, we'll be discussing the auction itself. The auction is simultaneously the most intimidating and the most exciting part of this business. I attended my first auction about 16 years ago now, and to be quite honest, I vividly remember it like it was yesterday. I was a very green investor. I was young, like right out of high school, right? I was 18 years old. I had my little binder ready. I had my pen, my notes, my deposit, all that cool stuff, right? I thought I was ready to go. Well, what happened was I went to the courthouse, opened that door, and then suddenly I was like, wow, in the twilight zone, right? There were people, and I thought everybody was staring at me. I thought everybody was judging me. I was just a timid 18-year-old kid. I thought everybody like, wow, they're staring at me, they're judging me, and everybody is decades older than I was. I was by far the youngest one in the room, but they were all much older than I was, and presumably they were much more experienced and successful and that good stuff. Looking back, I know that's different now, but at the time, it was so intimidating to me. So I remember the sign-in sheet to get my bidder registration number and all that good stuff. It was in the worst possible place that it could be. It was at the very front of the room. So I had to walk down the center aisle of this courthouse. It was actually the, the bidder assembly room is what they called it. I had to walk at the very center aisle, all the way to the front. And the entire time, my heart started pounding. Boom, boom, boom. Then I get to the front and I go to sign in. I was so nervous, guys, that my hands were literally shaking. So I had to remind myself, I'm like, Casey, focus, focus, calm down, Casey, settle down. It's not that big of a deal. And because the deal is I wanted them to be able to read my name as I was writing it. So finally, you know, I, all this good stuff, I got my bitter card. I went and I took my, my seat uh, kind of near the back so people couldn't stare at me and judge me. You know, nobody was staring at me. Nobody was judging me. But that was kind of my mindset at the time just because I was so timid. So, okay, that was my first auction. Fast forward 16 years now, and I, guys, I literally like an auction like every single day. I don't even know how many hundreds, if not thousands of auctions I've been to. So the deal is I no longer actually shake. I no longer get that nervous. No longer think people are judging me, but I do still occasionally get butterflies when a piece of property comes up that I want. And the deal is, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think it's just my body reminding me that, hey, I'm still as excited about this business right now as I was 16 years ago. So... You know, the deal is it's not that big of a deal. So maybe you're the type of person that gets very, very nervous and very, very anxious. Or maybe you're the type of person that, you know, could care less. You're you're really laid back. It doesn't matter what happens, right? Regardless of your personality, I wanted to do today's podcast episode to provide you with a little reassurance, a little peace of mind, and, you know, give you some expectations of what you can expect at a tax sale auction. Okay, so first things first, the preparation for the auction It does not start on the auction day, guys. It actually starts a long time before the auction day. We've discussed research in the past, and the truth is we have a a motto, which is research equals results. Again, research equals results. Your research will determine if you make a good investment or a lousy investment. It's really as simple as that. Now, obviously, we're not going to go into detail. This is not a research type episode, but your research will include analyzing your list, researching the properties, choosing the properties that you want to invest in, as well as your maximum bid amounts. At this time, I also start preparing a spreadsheet. That spreadsheet will include some property information, my maximum bid amounts, that kind of stuff. Now, even if I'm not going to bid on a piece of property, on that spreadsheet, I'll still list the properties in order. You know, So if I'm bidding on, the let's say, parcel number two and parcel number five, I'll say parcel number one. And it might be something as like not interested, or it might say properties in a flood zone or you know, lousy property or whatever. And then number two, of course, will have all the information that I want. Number three and four will say NA, not interested, you know, whatever. And then number five. And the reason I do this is so when I'm at the auction, I can kind of keep my space, you know, my, my spot. At, I can follow the auctioneer as they're working down their auction list so I don't lose where I'm at. Just kind of a side note. All right, so once you've got the research done, 
from there, it also includes research about the auction itself. We're not just researching the properties, we need to research the auction itself. So at least a few days before the auction begins, you wanna make sure that you have all your ducks in the road. You need to really read the auction instructions and any information that you can find out about that auction just to see how they operate, to see if there's anything specifically that you need to do for that auction. If anything is not clear in those instructions, if you're confused, if something is just a little bit cloudy, guys, don't be afraid to pick up the telephone Call the county and ask them your question. That's what they're there for, right? All right, now the auction instructions will provide you with any prerequisites to register. So on the auction list, a lot of times on the first page, the last page, or maybe on the same website, wherever you get your auction list, right around there, you're gonna have auction instructions. And those instructions, they'll list any prerequisites for you to register. Now, typically at the minimum, this will be, you know, you have to have some sort of government issued identification card, like a driver's license or something, right? Most people have that. Now, some areas that might also make you go ahead and put a deposit on file, you know, three, four, five days ahead of time. And this, this isn't always the case, but it does happen sometimes. And the last thing you wanna do is show up at the auction and they're like, do you have your deposit? Did you, did you send your deposit over last Friday like you were supposed to? And you're like, whoa, forgot all about that or I didn't even realize it. That's the last thing you wanna do. But again, sometimes this does happen and it is a requirement of some auctions. So check in you know, if there's any required deposits ahead of the auction, okay? Something else that happens from time to time is certain areas won't allow you to bid if you owe any delinquent taxes in that specific area. So if you're going to a new county or to, to a county that you've already purchased something in, but you had a piece of property and that maybe got foreclosed on, or maybe you owe taxes right now on that property, some areas won't allow you to bid in that area. So what they require is, they re usually require from the tax collector you to have an affidavit that says, from the, either a, you know some sort of affidavit from the tax collector, or maybe it's someone you sign yourself and you prepare that says, I don't owe any delinquent taxes in that particular county or particular city or whatever it may be. Then you have to turn that in and then sometimes they'll even verify that. So guys, this is stuff that happens, you know, at least a week ahead of time. So the time you wanna start figuring this stuff out is not the day of the auction because it's gonna to be too late. So as you're researching properties and as you're going through the properties, read those instructions, see if there's any prerequisites to register. All right, once you figure all that out, the registration process is usually a fairly straightforward process. If you're an online bidder, you're usually gonna be registering online, right? It's pretty simple. You go in, you complete the process, you type your information, sometimes you provide a social security number, sometimes you provide a driver license number, sometimes it's just your name and address. It just depends on the county and the area that you're investing in. Now, sometimes this might be an automated process, like you're registering an account for like Gmail or something, right? Like just a typical online account. Other times it right, might actually require manual approval. So you'll submit this information, somebody at the county office will look it over, they'll say, yes, you're approved. So this could take two, three, four days, maybe a week or longer. So if it's not an automated process, again, you wanna make sure you give yourself plenty of time because you don't wanna be registering the day of the auction only to realize that, hey, nobody's at the county to approve you because they're going to the auction and you're gonna miss out on that auction. So make sure you do this stuff ahead of time, okay? If you're attending in person, you'll typically sign up at the registration table. Now, sometimes you might have to register in advance, right? But a lot of times you'll just sign up at the registration table at the auction itself. Again, you're gonna provide your driver's license, your state ID, whatever, and in return, you'll get a bidder number typically. Sometimes it might be a paddle, sometimes it might be a piece of paper that has like a number on it or something like that. So it just kind of depends on the county and like where you're at. So, you know, it's really not that big of a deal, it's just a number, right? But the deal is sometimes too, when you register, you'll also be required to put a deposit in order to get that number. So in exchange, you know, you'll give them, you know, maybe a $500 deposit or a $100 deposit and they'll say, okay, here's your bidder number. So that's required a lot of times in counties where they've had issues in the past where bidders will bid on something, then they'll leave without paying. So they just kind of, you know, kind of play it by ear. And again, most of the information will be in the instructions alongside the tax sell list. All right, now, if you're, whether you're registering online or you're attending online or attending live, guys, please, please, please arrive early. I've had situations before where my internet has bogged down or I've lost connection or their software that the auction company uses is just lousy and it won't load quickly, right? So what happens is I'm sitting, I'm trying to refresh, 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 and the auction is going off and I'm missing properties I wanna bid on. Likewise, I've been late to register auctions. So what happens is I'm stuck in this long registration line with a bunch of other people that are arrived late and in the other room, I hear the auctioneer start auctioning off properties that I want to invest in. Guys, that is not, neither one of those are good feelings. Know that you're potentially missing out on a profitable piece of property. So do not procrastinate. 
Do not sleep in. Arrive early. Worst case scenario is you're the only person there. You're the first person to register and you sit in the room by yourself reviewing your notes. It's not that bad. Maybe you can get to know the auctioneer network, all that good stuff. All right. After the registration, it's time to grab a seat. No, this is not, you know, middle school where you sit in the back of the bus and be cool or anything like that. I always suggest that you sit as close to the front as possible and definitely within a direct line of sight with the auctioneer. So basically the auctioneer is to be able to see your face, see your mouth, and hopefully see your entire body. You know, maybe this is an edge. If you're not in the very first row, maybe this is a second row in the edge seat or an aisle seat or something like that. This is for one primary reason, and that is that your bid will most certainly be heard before anyone else's bid at the same time. If they can see you, they can see your lips moving, and you're close to them, guess what? The guy in the back of the room and you, if you bid at the exact same time, the auctioneer is going to recognize your bid and not his bid. It's just as simple as that. Then also, there's two secondary reasons. One is that it helps the, to have the auctioneer recognize you. Okay, you know, maybe it's a auctioneer that goes to auction, 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 and guess what? That right auctioneer is going to, you know, start noticing you, start paying attention to you. Maybe if it's just an auctioneer that's there one time, you know, right? Maybe it's just a one year, once a year type auction. At the very least, you can say, how are you doing? Or good morning to you or something like that. And even still, you wouldn't think about it, but subconsciously in the auctioneer's mind, because they, in quote, know you or they've spoken to you, they're going to recognize you before that stranger in the back of the room. So that's another kind of secondary reason. And also kind of a, I guess a third reason is that sometimes you might even hear a little bit of small talk that might help you. So the auctioneer might cut his mic off and might turn to the person, you know, to his auction staff and say, hey, is this the property that burned down this morning? Or is this the property that we had an issue with the title? Or is this a property that so-and-so? And, and the deal is if you're sitting in the back of the room, you're not going to know what's going on. Now, you won't always hear these little tidbits of information, but it's a kind of a nice little, nice little bonus to sitting up front, all right? All right, so the first part of the auction will usually going to consist of the rules. Once you sit down, once it gets time to the auction, they're going to start reading the rules. Now, some of these auctions, if it's a noon, 12 o'clock auction, they're going to start at noon, 12 o'clock on the dot. Others, you know, they might push it back 5, 10, 20 minutes, just varies on the auction, but make sure you're there in your seat ready to rock and roll at 12 noon if that's when the auction starts. So when the auction starts, and quote, they'll usually start with the actual instructional process. They'll go through the instructions, the rules, that kind of stuff. And this can be anywhere from five minutes to a 30 minute process. Now it can be a painstaking process. It can be tiresome, it can be boring, but it is very, very important that you don't zone out. These rules will include information on the process, how to bid, how to pay, and all sorts of other information that'll prove very helpful to you. Even if you've already heard the rules from the same auctioneer 50 times, there's a chance that the rules can change because they often do change. So pay attention. I remember going to a, one particular state and the same auctioneer auctioned off a lot of the count, a lot of the properties in that you know the state for a variety of different counties. So they would go from one county to the next to the next. That same auctioneer, I heard him, and I can I can literally in the back of my head tell you the rules, and I can you know pronounce them in his voice because I remember hearing him so many times over and over and over again. I could actually recite his jokes for you that he would tell because he used the same exact jokes at every single auction. Well, guess what? After about 50 auctions, they changed the rules. They changed the rules just slightly, and the next time at the next auction, after about number 50 or so. They tossed in something that I wasn't expecting, but luckily I was paying attention. They tossed in a few lines that said, listen, in order for you to get the deed, you have to pay the taxes for the year in which you're purchasing the property. So, you know, say it was 2016. In 2016, you might have bought the property in October, but before you got the deed, you had to pay the entire year's worth of taxes for 2016. Not that big of a deal to me, but the deal was there's an extra few thousand bucks out of my pocket. It was something that had I not paid attention, uh, you know, and I went to pay, I'd be like, whoa, was not expecting that. But luckily I knew what was going on and I did pay attention. So rules do change from time to time. Pay close attention to the rules, no matter how many times you have heard them. Now, after the rules are read, the auction process will begin. Typically, the auctioneer will read the lot number of the property being offered. They might say, you know, lot number one, two, three, it might be some sort of sequential order. Or they might continue from like the year before, you know, if they've auctioned off, I don't know, 5,000 properties in that county over the years, they might actually start lot number 5,001, 5,002, 5,003. So whatever it is, there's going to be some sort of reference number. After that reference number, they'll usually announce something about the property. It could be just the parcel number. It could be the legal description. It could be, you know, an entire description, an address that they have, and all this good stuff. So pay attention and make sure it matches precisely the information that you have on your bid sheet. 
So the auctioneer, they might say, listen, if you want to bid, you raise your card up and you hold your card. Or you might raise your hand up. Or it could even be a spoken bid. In this situation, you know, the auctioneer will read the information. They say, okay, opening the floor bid for bids at $500. So you would say $525. Somebody else would say $550 or whatever the bid increments are. So you would kind of speak your bid and make sure you say it very clearly and loud enough for other people to hear you. Because if you're the person that kind of whispers $500, Everybody is going to get upset with you, okay? And you don't want to be that person that everybody's anger is focused on you because you're being quiet. So announce it with authority, $525, okay? With that said, be sure that you know the bid increments that are used. Most auctions will not allow you to go up in one cent increments. So instead, of, if an open bid is $500, your first bid is usually not going to be $500 and one cents because that would be absolutely miserable and the auction would take days. Instead, they'll usually require some sort of minimum increase of some sort. And this will again be announced when the rules are read. So there's another reason to pay close attention at that time. All right, so the auction is, you know, we've read the rules, we got registered, read the rules, and we've been on some properties. And then finally, we won some properties, right? Once you won a property, it'll be time to make payment. Now, depending on the auction is handled and how the rules dictate, you'll either make payment directly after the sale of that particular property or at the conclusion of the auction. Some auctions, what they'll do is they'll say, okay, that parcel sold. You come up here and you pay for it right now. So before the auction, the next piece of property, you walk up there, you strike them a check, give them cash, whatever they accept. And then once they have your successful payment, then the auction the next property. And the reason is if you don't pay right then or right there, they'll go ahead and re-auction that piece of property off. So sometimes they do it every piece. You have to go up there and pay before they move on. Other times, you'll kind of have a list going on. You know, you'll, you want this piece of property, this piece of property, this piece of property. And at the very end of the auction, you'll go to a payment table and you'll check out. So it just kind of depends on how the auction itself is set up. Likewise, most auctions, I would say 90% of auctions, will require the full payment to be made that day of the auction. There's some areas that will allow you to put a deposit down and then you make the balance payment within 24 hours or 72 hours, something like that. So again, make sure you read the rules. From there, you're really all done. You wait for the, re for the deed or the redemption period to expire and then you'll become the owner of the property. It's a pretty straightforward and simple process and it's really nothing to be intimidated about. I know it can be nervous at first and what will happen is, is guys, the more auctions you attend, the more confident you'll become as you attend these auctions. So hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of what to expect at the auctions themselves. I did also want to give you a few little tips. Couldn't really fit these in above, but I want to give you a few little tips and a few little pointers that I've learned over the years. All right. So the first one is listen to other bidders chatter. Be, don't be nosy, but feel free to be social. You know, go out and shake some hands, network with people, learn what others are doing. You know, you should really take anything that they say as far as a property specific type thing with a grain of salt because they are your competition after all. But you should be surprised what you can learn from other people. And ultimately, you can really network and meet a lot of great people, a lot of great connections that can help your business uh, just really thrive. Another tip is on, you know, how you dress. My suggestion is, unless you want everybody to think you're an attorney, don't wear a suit, okay? I always dress fairly casual, you know, maybe like a polo and some slacks, something like that. But you also don't want to be so casual that the auctioneer suspects you can't pay for anything. You know, if you show up in like a tank top and some ripped shorts and some sandals, and then there's a guy dressed nice to you, guess what, guys? Maybe, I don't know for sure, but maybe subconsciously, the auctioneer's thinking, this guy can't pay for it, so the bid's going to go to this guy anytime there's a high. So guys, dress fairly casual, but, um, you know, don't overdo it. Don't go way too casual. Don't go, you know, way too dressy where you have to wear, you know, a, a black tuxedo or anything at, to every auction, right? Likewise, if you do get cold easily, make sure you take a sweater with you because some of the auction rooms are fairly cold. Another tip is about food. I remember sitting on a courthouse bench one time for like 12 hours nonstop. The auction company, they routinely switch auctioneers and the auction itself never stopped. They would go from one property to the next to the next. It was a large county and they had a lot of properties auctioned off. Besides a couple of trips to the bathrooms, I did not leave for fear of missing out on a piece of property that I wanted. Guys, let me tell you, come like hour 8, 9, 10, 11, I would have literally paid somebody $100 just to have a Snickers bar. I was so hungry. My stomach was drowning. It was in pain. I just wanted something to put in my stomach. And they had no vending machines there. They had no drink machines or anything like that. And that's when I learned my lesson. Hey, if there's a lot of pieces of property that are going to be auctioned off, take some sort of snack with you. Even if it's in your car and you have to like go outside real quick and pop back in or whatever it is, take a snack with you guys because I promise you, sitting there for 12 hours when you're used to eating, you know, every few hours like I am, guys, it's going to be miserable. 
All right, last tip is something that'll really help you learn, and that is to take notes. To this day, I take notes. Write down anything that you find interesting or unusual, and then maybe research it a little bit later. So say there's a piece of property, and you're like, you know, property's worth a thousand bucks, and that property sells for like, I don't know, $300,000. And you're like, what? Mine is blown. What in the world happened? Guess what, guys? Write that down. Go home, research it, and figure out why. Figure out what you missed. Use every auction as a learning opportunity. I'm going to say that again because I think it's so important. Lose every auction, every single auction that you go to. Use it as a learning opportunity. All right? So there it is, guys. There's the auction process in a nutshell. And that's going to be it for today's episode. I really hope you've enjoyed it. As always, for more information on tax law investing, head on over to taxlawacademy.com. Again, that's taxlawacademy.com. While you're there, make sure you grab a free copy of my new book, Tax Sale Playbook. Let me know where to ship it to you, and we will get it out in the mail. And guys, I'd also like to ask a favor for you. If you enjoy this podcast, this is a completely free podcast, and we do it because we like providing strategic and actual training and strategies for new tax sale investors. So if you like this podcast, please go ahead and rate this podcast, and we just certainly appreciate it. And it definitely helped continue to motivate us to produce these episodes on a very regular basis. That's it for today, guys. As always, have a wonderful day. And I wish you lots of success in your tax sale business. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.